Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create your own vintage wanted poster from the Wild West. This tutorial is an update to one I did on an earlier version of Photoshop. I provided this template so you can follow along. Its link is located in the video description or project files. It includes a weathered wood plank background, the base for our poster, distressed paper texture, four antique nail heads, ornamental borders, and a cartouche. In addition, I supplied links to these fonts that I'll be using in this video. To make the white disappear that surrounds the cartouche, change the blend mode to multiply. Reduce its opacity to 80%. Make the borders layer active and reduce its opacity also to 80%. Make the nail head layer active. Click the FX icon and click Bevel and Emboss. The style is Inner Bevel, the Technique Smooth, and the Depth 100%. The direction is Up, and the size is 2 pixels. Uncheck Global Light, make the angle minus 40 degrees, and keep the angle 30 degrees. Make the Highlight Mode Linear Dodge, and the opacity 30%. Make the shadow's opacity 0. Click Drop Shadow. Change the blend mode to Linear Burn and its opacity 40%. Make sure Global Light is checked and make the angle 135 degrees. Make the distance 3 pixels and the size 5 pixels. Then click OK. Make the paper texture active, change its blend mode to multiply, and reduce its opacity to 85%. Make the base layer active, and double click an empty area of the layer to open its layer style window. Click Bevel and Emboss. Make the size 3 pixels and the highlight opacity 50%. Change the shadows blend mode to linear burn and its opacity to 50% as well. Click inner glow. Click the color box and pick black. Then click OK. Change the blend mode to color burn and its opacity to 60%. Make the noise 20% and the size 68 pixels. Then click OK. Next, we'll add the photo. To save space in the Layers panel, click the small black triangles next to the effects icons to collapse the effects. The effects are still there, they're just hidden from view. Make the cartouche layer active. Above this layer, we'll place our photo. First, Open your Rectangular Marquee Tool and drag a rectangular selection centered between the borders. Open a photo you'd like to place into your wanted poster. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock.com. To get it into your wanted poster, press V to open your Move Tool and drag it up onto the tab of the poster. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down onto the image and release. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to your photo. Think of the layer mask as a stencil. The white area reveals the image and the black area masks it out. To reposition and resize your photo, click off the chain link between the photo and the layer mask. Now, we can reposition or resize either the photo or the layer mask independently of each other. Since we want to reposition the photo, make the photo active. Drag it to a position you like. If you want to resize it, press Ctrl or Command T to open your transform tool. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in or out. 
position the face, then press enter or return. Next, we'll colorize it, add grain, and adjust its brightness and contrast. Double click the thumbnail of your photo to open its layer style window. Click Color Overlay and the color box. Type in D7BF96, then click OK. Change the blend mode to color and click OK. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the texture folder and click Grain. Make the grain type enlarged. I'm using 25 for the intensity and 50 for the contrast. However, depending on the characteristics of your photo, you may want to adjust these amounts until your photo looks similar to this. Then click OK. If there are areas of your photo that are brighter than the paper, we need to darken them. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels. Click the Clipping Mask icon to clip or restrict the Levels Adjustment Layer to effect just the one layer beneath it in the Layers panel. For this photo, I'll brighten the input midtones to 1.48. Keep in mind, for your photo, you may want to use different amounts to get the combination of brightness and contrast that looks good to you. I'll darken the output highlights until the brightest areas of the photo match the brightness of the paper. To make the black areas a bit less dense, I'll drag the output shadows a bit to the right. To consolidate more space in the Layers panel, group the face and its adjustment layer into a folder. To do this, shift-click on the thumbnail of the face to highlight both layers, then press Ctrl or Command G. Let's name it Face. Group the paper texture and the base into a folder using the same steps and name it Paper. Make the Face folder active to place our text above it. Open your horizontal type tool and go to Window and Character. The Character panel will open. For the word Wanted, I'll use Regulators Condensed. If you want to use the same fonts as I'm using, open it and click on the font. Make the size 70 points and make sure its horizontal and vertical scales are 100%. Click on your document and type Wanted. To reposition it, open your Move tool and move it. Click below the word and for the next text, choose the Dead Saloon Regular. For the vertical scale, type in 48 to squeeze the text vertically and type the word Dead. Press the spacebar three times and type the word Alive. We press the spacebar to make room between the two words for the word OR. To resize it, click the Move tool and open your Transform tool. Go to a corner, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift and drag it in until it's approximately the same width as the word wanted. Then center it and press Enter or Return. Press T to open your Type tool and click below the cartouche. Type the word OR. Click the Move tool and open your Transform tool. Go to the middle right side of your Transform and press and hold Ctrl-Alt-Shift on Windows or Command-Option-Shift on a Mac as you drag the Transform up to skew it from the center anchor point. Then, reduce its size and position it to fit comfortably between the words Dead and Alive. Open your Type tool and click below the cartouche. In this area, we'll type in a name. For this example, I'll make the vertical scale 100%, the horizontal scale 170, and the size 21 points. For your name, play with these amounts to fit your text comfortably. Press Enter or Return and type out your text. 
Open your Move tool to center it. Open your Type tool and click below your photo. In this area, we'll type in the reward. For the font, I'll use Saddlebag Regular. I'll make its size 46 points and its horizontal scale 44%. Press Enter or Return and type out your text. As before, open your Move tool to center it. Let's group all the text into its own folder using the same steps as you used earlier. Let's name the folder Text. Reduce the opacity to 90%. Now, all the text that's inside the folder has an opacity of 90%. We can close the character panel now. Next, we'll add scratches to the poster. First, let's group the text, face, cartouche, and borders into one folder since these are the elements that we'll be adding scratches to. Use the same steps as you used earlier. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask next to the folder. We'll be adding scratches to the layer mask which will reveal the background through the scratches. Open your brush tool and open your brush thumbnails. Click the gear icon to open your list of brush presets. I included marks and scratches for you to download into your brush preset folder. If you're not sure how to install brushes into Photoshop, watch my tutorial showing how to do this. When you see this window, click OK to replace the current set of brushes with marks and scratches. To make the thumbnails appear bigger, click the gear icon and click Large Thumbnail. You can try the various scratches, however, I'll click the first one and make it size 1700 pixels. Move your brush over your poster and left click on your mouse or pen. If you don't like the position of the scratches, undo it by pressing Ctrl or Command Z. Once you've added your scratches, click the Move tool to make your cursor easier to see. Click off the eyeball of the background to temporarily hide the layer. We'll make a composite snapshot of just your poster by pressing Ctrl Shift Alt E on Windows or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Since we have the composite snapshot, we can hide its source layers. Next, we'll add a drop shadow to the poster. Double click on an empty area of the poster layer to open its layer style window. Click Drop Shadow. Change the blend mode to Linear Burn and make the opacity 25%. Make the distance 8 pixels and the size 10 pixels. Then click OK. Make the background visible and open your Transform tool. Click the Warp icon. This divides your transform into sections that can be manipulated to warp the shape under it. Place your cursor on the middle of the top line and drag it in a little. Repeat this on the middle of the right side, the middle of the left line, and the middle of the bottom line. Then press Enter or Return. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.